Welcome back. Now, as you've seen, when you believe that your car is top dog, you will do anything you can to convince the skeptics that your car is, in fact, the best. Now, Alan McKee made a good case, but Mike Smith from Cambridge believes that his car is the dog's, and he's got a TVR V8S. My name is Mike Smith, and this is my TVR 4 liter V8S. It's a 1991 uh, TVR V8S. Um, the S-Series was pretty much known as the car that saved TVR um, and used as the, the bed to develop the Griffith and then it went forward. It's got about 240-250 brake horsepower, 270 pounds a foot of torque, do not a 16 for 4.9 seconds, do 150 mile an hour apparently. It's an affordable sports car, um, it's pretty much cheap to run because it's so light, one it's fast but it's also good in economy. It's based on a, on a range of a full litre V8 so the, the maintenance is, is very cheap to, uh, to get hold of, all the parts are, are readily available. It's very comfortable if you want long journeys, it's got adjustable dampers and springs so I can adjust it to track setting or I can adjust it to comfortable driving. And I think it's, a, it's one of the best iconic cars there is, especially for the money. Mike is here with us with his 1991 TVR V8S. Looks like you had a good time out there. Yeah, it was fun. Okay, no rubber left on your tyres after all that nonsense. Now, Alan, you've had, had a chance to listen to Alan and hit the hard time he's had from mm -hmm. the panel. Do you think you can do better than him? Of course. Okay, well, let's see what the panel have to say. I'm going to launch straight into the history of the TVR, and I'm going to start with you, Greg. Well, TVR is a British company. I think it's one of the, perhaps the only company now that's still uh, under British ownership. started in 1947. They started out making uh, kit cars and moved on to... Uh, ready-made cars for the customer. Um, nice lines, I like the car. Blackpool's finest, it's often termed. I mean, this car in particular was introduced by Peter Wheeler to try and save the company. The, the Tasman at the time, the very angular TVR, was not selling, so he had to rush in a, a new model very quickly. Harking back to the old M cars of the 70s, which sold extremely well, and in essence, the S models did save the company. Okay. What about you, Ralph? I think it's, a, it's an amazing car. Again, a, a small British company actually uh, rivaling a lot of much larger companies and bringing out so many new models over a very short time period. Um, it's quite amazing. And so it's, it's got a, an interesting history when you look back at the, the history of TVR as a company. But style-wise, I mean, you're saying that, Paul, that this car replaced the sort of wedge-shaped TVRs that were nosediving. Mm -hmm. They were going nowhere. And this, this car saved TVR. Yes, it's quite a miracle when you look at it because it really was a, a retro car that didn't need to be in many respects. It was harking back to an earlier era. It's not something that I particularly like. I think they, they could have really done something more innovative, which of course they did shortly after this car, which was the Griffith. Well, the panel will have a chance to say a little bit more in a minute and Mike will have his say about his car himself. But first, we want your comments about the TVR and all the cars featured in this show. So just log on to our website at menandmotors.co.uk. You can also tell us what cars you think should be on the show and maybe you've got an iconic car yourself that you think we should feature. If you have, just log on. So on with the debate then. And Greg, technically, what can you give us about the car? Well, I like the engine. It's, it's got an engine that started life in Britain in the old three and a half litre uh, Rover that Prime Minister Harold Wilson and later Margaret Thatcher used to use. But this has obviously been developed uh, further for this particular car, but the engine uh, has a long history. It, it's a reliable engine if you remember to do certain things to, to always make sure you've got antifreeze in and to change the oil regularly. So I like the power unit of this car. Okay, Paul, technically? Well, in many respects, it's a parts bin car. They've uh, robbed the parts <laughs> bins of all the, the I manufacturers. I know, well, earlier you were all saying that it looks like Sierra Lights. Well, it probably is. I think we ought to have a competition on that. But uh, <laughs> it certainly is a mismatch and mixed together of all sorts of parts from and other is cars. Is that a good that thing or a bad thing? For me, no, because it was a bespoke car, and Britain's often known for bespoke engineering. I think they, they could have tried a bit harder in, in that respect. So it's a bit of a mixed bo box mixed for you. Mixed box, a yeah. bit more kit garish. Ralph? Well, it's, uh, it's a good tried and tested formula. You've got a, a fairly good um, spine frame chassis with double wishbone suspension all around, although the rear suspension is a little bit strange, but uh, the Rover V8 used in this one was developed by Andy Rouse. He bought it out to 3.9 litres and got 240 horsepower out of it. Um, which is something that we've seen Land Rover do themselves. Um, so it's a Land Rover? <laughs> it is a Land Rover type of engine. But can I, can yes. I just take up something you said? You said it's a bit kit carish. 
what is wrong with being a bit kit carish? It is in the true British tradition. Jensen, the Jensen Interceptor, a fabulous car, used a Chrysler engine. Morgan, the Morgan sports car, uses a Rover engine. What's wrong with being kit carish? I think there's nothing wrong with taking the, the power plant, but the rest of the car is it looks cheap in comparison. And Britain, I think, has has an excellent reputation for bespoke engineering. And Bristol, for example, you could take as another example. Mm -hmm where the car has a, a certain level of exclusivity about it. Mike, how do you feel about these guys sat there t t t saying your car is a mixed bag of bits from other cars? Well, I'd agree with them. They've, they've used bits from other cars, but so do Aston Martin. You look at a DB7, <laughs> and you will find a lot of Ford parts coming from Mondeos, from Fiestas, and you're right, they're escort lights. But it's all part of the fun of the car. The car makes me smile, and it makes people that see me driving it smile. OK, well, our last part of our debate as to whether or not Mike's TVR V8S is coming up in just a moment. But first, we sent Mike and his car to do some more donuts out on the track. Tell me, do you drive like that every day? Not every day, but uh, the guys asked me and I Oh, obliged. it was on, on demand, mm -hmm. was it? Is that the first time you've had a chance to drive it like that? Yeah. You enjoyed it? Yeah. And I hope my insurance company's not watching. <laughs> Why? <laughs> so, on with the debate. Chaps, interior. Let's have a talk about that. Now, I know you're in the middle of changing it from, yeah. from grey to cream, so it wouldn't normally be that sort of dual colour inside. But what do you think of the interior? I, I, I like the interior. To me, this is how a British sports car should be. The dials are all in a line. The gear lever's easy to, to reach. Uh, but it's the interior that actually puts me off the car at the same time because I can't get in it. Mm. Uh, I've got very long legs and I found that I could not get a comfortable driving position in this car. So for me, that's a big no-no. I, I could not drive this car uh, with ease at all. Yeah, so you just couldn't even consider it yeah. really. Paul, you obviously fit in there, yep. but what's it like inside? Well, uh, it's not quite British enough for me. The, the wood almost looks plastic in the, like the German <laughs> car manufacturers. Yeah, it doesn't matter. And it, it's not quite right. I would have expected from a British car manufacturer, at least the wood, to be looking uh, Proper wood, not the plastic stuff. Well, that's the thing, it's too highly polished, and uh, you notice the stitching lines are all slightly wavy, like it, like that whole thing about being a kit car, mm. really, because that gives it that slightly shoddy. But it image. does look sporty, I mean, it does look sporty. The seating position is low, so you're going to get a good feeling of speed. And you can find the switches. Absolutely, yes. <laughs> yeah. It's obviously fun to drive, easy to spin, as they all are. Yeah. Um, performance, what do you reckon? Uh, I think the performance is adequate. The only thing that makes me slightly nervous, I once had a car uh, where I lost a wheel at 70 miles an hour, and I noticed it's only got four wheel studs on each uh, wheel, and I actually prefer cars with five wheel studs on. <laughs> well, do you have wheel f wheels falling off regularly? Well, then? it's Does happened it to me twice. So, is it? Uh, what do you do wrong? Don't ever change a wheel on my car. <laughs> 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 You're definitely doing something wrong. How does wrong that work? Then. Why do wheels fall off your cars? Well, it, it, uh, one car, the, 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 the bolt sheared, sheared through, and I don't know why. It must have been a fault. Oh. Well, hopefully the TDR doesn't nice. have quite that problem. I mean, it's, it's a big V8. I mean, it should go well enough. It's going to make a great noise, go fast, but for how long? It should go fast, because basically the car's, again, it's a, a Tupperware over a, a, a frame, so it doesn't weigh very much, so you put any sort of large engine in there, it will go exceptionally well. OK, chaps, I'm going to stop you there, I'm afraid. We've had enough time for talking. It's now time to face the facts about the TVR V8S. It has a 4-litre V8 engine, a maximum speed of 147 miles an hour, 240 brake horsepower. It gets from 0 to 60 in under 5 seconds. It has a 5-speed gearbox, and its current value is around £12,000. This is your last-ditch attempt to try and turn around the panel. Give them your plea as to why your TVR should be this week's top dog. Well, for a start, the engine's uh, in the correct place, unlike <laughs> the Porsche, and it doesn't spin at every opportunity <clears throat> round roundabouts. But uh, it's a true British sports car, like you say. It looks better than the Porsche, and that can't be, that's, that's undoubted. Um, it's faster than the Porsche. It, nothing, nothing sounds like a v V8S or a TVR, and certainly the Porsche would, would die for this soundtrack. Um, <laughs> but the, 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 the basic part of the, uh, this equation is you could buy two of these for one of those Porsches. And for me, the Porsche is not worth double the money. 
Mike, thank you for your plea panel. You've heard what Mike has to say. You've seen his car. I want you to give me a little summary on you, what you reckon the TVR top dog potential is. And I'll start with you, Greg. Well, it's British. Um, it's uh, a great British company. I really wanted to like this car. The kit car origins don't matter to me too much. What does matter is I can't get my legs into the <laughs> driving position. That's a big <laughs> It's problem. a bit of a non-starter yeah. for you. Paul? Yes, I think this is a bit of a mismatch. I think this is Barry McGuigan against Lennox Lewis. We've... Uh, Probably had a better time if we'd had the, the Griffith here to fight the 911. So I see it as really hard for this car mm. to win. Okay, Ralph? You can buy two of these for the price of the Porsche. Um, whether or not you'd need to, so you actually have one that's always working, is another question. Okay, well, there you go, panel. Thank you very much. You've seen the 911, you've seen the TBR. It's now Top Dog decision time. When this car came in, I really wanted to support this car because it's British. You could get two of these for the price of a Porsche. Is it, is it really worth? So I think we have to forget the price because we're really just comparing the cars. We have to assume that any buyer can have either of these two. I couldn't drive this car every day because of the lack of legroom. Oh. I think this is a much prettier car than the 911. It doesn't have that funny Capri thing going on at the back. <laughs> it doesn't have those gorgeous lines. That's what you're missing, you yeah. see. The interior is better on this car. Yeah, um, but only just. The important thing is it's a sports car, so its performance is the crucial factor. And I think image as well. I think people, if you say you're driving a Porsche, it still does carry some cachet. So, Greg, on behalf of your panel, could you please tell us which is this week's winner? Two great cars, but by a majority decision, the Porsche. Oh, ah. congratulations, Alan. Well Thank done. You. Well done. Thank you. And Mike, you must be a little bit gutted. Not really. Different day, different judges. Mm. Just cost twice as much. So. That's true. Well, well done. Thank you very Thank you. much, panel. That's it for now. We must thank everyone here at the Donington Grand Prix Collection in Derby for looking after us. Join us next time to see which iconic car will be crowned Top Dog. <laughs>